Mm, Jai Gurudev. Jai Masters. Some people think that spirituality and the world, these are different things. That is the greatest folly of all. The truth is, your work in the world, all of it, is your greatest, greatest path to spirituality. Way beyond meditation, way beyond mantra, way beyond yoga asanas. You do meditation, you do mantra, they say they are your practices. Well, if you're practicing something, there must be some reason to be practicing. You're practicing so that you can walk into this life, the one that's unfolding in front of you, and learn to get rid of what it is that you have built inside of yourself, the walls, the blockages that are keeping you from your greatness. If you had your way, you would make everything outside match your problems inside. If you're afraid of heights, you'd never go near height. If you're afraid of relationships, you'd, people would leave you alone. If you're afraid of being alone, there'd always be somebody with you. If you feel insecure, then you get a new car and you feel like you got a prop to make yourself feel stronger. If you feel no meaning in your life, then you get a certain kind of job or you have people applaud or something. This is how people live. They don't realize they have problems inside. And these problems are keeping them from the greatness that is their natural state. And so instead of getting rid of the problems inside, they try to placate them. They try to have the outside be a way that their problems don't bother them. That is the essence of ignorance. If there's something wrong, fix it. Don't compensate for it. Don't go around and expect the whole world and everybody in it to be a certain way so that you don't have the problems that you have, or at least that you don't experience the problems that you have. And this is the folly. This is the folly of humanity. Everybody's got stuff inside. Everybody's got different problems inside. Everybody's got different soft spots, likes and dislikes and preferences and fears and desires. That's what they got going on inside. There's a bundle of it. And they go out into the world and they see the world as the place to take care of this. They see that relationships are the way to not feel lonely, or the way to feel important, or the way to feel loved, and so on. They feel that a, a job is a way to get security, is to feel important, is to have people respect you. They feel that money is to create security, is to create a backdrop, is to make it so you don't have to be dependent on anybody, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, I am coming out into this world out here in order to fix what's wrong with me. I am coming to this world out here because I am not okay in here. And I need for the world to unfold in a way that makes me feel better. At least that'll make me feel worse. And I want to unfold in a way that hits my stuff so I feel worse. And I would like it to unfold in a way where it feels nicer inside. That sounds so innocent. <laughs> it sounds so natural. It is the bane of your existence. It is that which will make it so you will never, ever be okay. If there is something wrong with you inside, to put some situation, person, place, or thing from outside on top of it doesn't get rid of it at all, ever. You know that. If you're insecure and you enter a relationship, you're afraid that the person will cheat on you. You're afraid the person will leave you. You're afraid that the person will love you anymore. Aren't you? Of course you are, because insecurity is insecure. Insecurity doesn't know how not to be insecure. It just knows how to feel maybe this will make me feel better. And then it clings to the relationship and generally makes a complete mess of it. <laughs> that's what it does. And that's just insecurity. Now let's say a jealousy and this and that and all kinds of stuff. So you can't keep your problem and then expect the world outside to unfold in a way that doesn't disturb your problem and maybe makes you even feel better about your problem. The problem is it does work some. There's no question. If you're lonely and somebody comes and dotes all over you and pays attention to you, you don't feel as lonely. But I'm telling you, and I hope you know by now, it did not get rid of one single bit of your loneliness. All it did was distract your consciousness from being aware of your loneliness because you are en en enchanted, enthralled by this person outside who's doting all over you. 
and saying these nice things and treating you a special way. So that captures your consciousness. Therefore, your, your awareness of being shifts off of your fixation to your loneliness and these problems you have inside. And of course you feel better. Of course you feel better. If you're sitting there watching a TV show and it's Stephen King horror, you don't feel so good. If I change the channel, you feel better. All right? If I change what's going on outside and it shifts my consciousness to something that's nicer, of course I'm going to feel better because I'm experiencing what my consciousness is falling upon. That's what you experience. You experience where your consciousness is. There's 865 billion things going on at once in the world. You experience where your consciousness is. All right? You could be in the biggest party that ever lived. I felt wonderful people, wonderful thing, but you broke up with your boyfriend or girlfriend recently and you go there and all you feel is loneliness. All you feel is heartache. You, your life is the experience of where your consciousness is. It is not the experience of what's actually happening. It's the experience of where you rest your consciousness. So there is no question that if something happens that's out of the ordinary, such as somebody you know, saying really nice things to you or you getting applauded or you winning a lottery or different things happen that draw your consciousness or even seeing a beautiful sunset, all right, or having a beautiful intimate relationship or something, romance, then these things draw your consciousness to that which at that time is more beautiful. And so you feel, I don't feel lonely anymore. You want to bet? You want to bet the moment that person doesn't call when they're supposed to, you get all scared and lonely? If it ceases to distract your consciousness from your garbage, your consciousness is going to settle back into the garbage. <laughs> all right? There's nothing wrong with you. That's totally natural. If there's not something drawing your consciousness away from what's closest to you, which is your garbage inside, your consciousness is going to settle right back into that way of thinking, to that way of feeling, and into those different issues that you have left untaken care of inside. So it's not renunciation. I teach this all the time. There's no renunciation. Right? It's not like I need something and I'm not going to do it because it's spiritual to not do it. That's just ridiculous. That's just another form of suppression. It is not about renunciation. It is about wisdom. It is about waking up and realizing there's nothing wrong with the world. It's there. It's amazing. I've given you my discussions about the world. I, it started off 13.8 billion years ago, a whole bunch of hydrogen gas, thick, thick clouds of hydrogen gas. And it left it alone for 13.8 billion years and it made you and giraffes and elephants and all the plants and orchids and 300 billion stars in your galaxy and there's trillions of galaxies. Oh, my God. All of it is made out of that gas. Do you understand that? Nothing was added. Just the laws pulled it together to squish it together through fusion and made the different elements because it squished them together in a nucleus. And so you had all these different elements being created. Then they got pulled together due to electromagnetic laws. And all I know, just study it because it should blow your mind. So that gas, it became your nose. Just took a while. All right. To me, that gas put itself together to make the DNA molecule. You know about the DNA molecule, don't you? You know, the one that is coded to be able to make every single cell in your body. That's coded out of a chemical structure. Where did it come from? It wasn't there in the beginning. The laws were such that if you left it, there were no humans here. There's no Einstein. Okay. There's no, like, they're all proud that they coded, the, decoded the human genome. What made the genome? How did they get there? How did that happen? So the world out there is an amazing thing. It's just, it should blow your mind every single day, anything that's happening. The fact that it's even there, the fact that this planet is there spinning around the middle of nowhere, give me a break, okay? So there, the world's there. You're not renouncing it. You're not doing anything with it. You're appreciating it. You're in awe of it. You're blown away by it. It's just miraculous. The problem is you have this stuff inside that you have not dealt with. And it's very, very problematic, isn't it? It's not so much fun to live in there. There's constant fear, constant insecurity, not fear of the lions jumping at me, just, what did I say? Was that bad? Oh my God, I can't believe I said that. that was so stupid. Anybody know anything about that? Okay, that's what goes on in there, all right? It's not a nice place. You're afraid that people don't like you. You're afraid you said something stupid. You're afraid that you drop some ketchup on your dress or your pants at lunch. You're afraid that somebody's going to get your job. You're afraid that you didn't get the raise and somebody else got the raise. And what does that mean? Did you do something wrong? It is not a fun place to live in there. 
So now the question becomes, the world is unfolding. It's been unfolding forever. It has nothing to do with you. It's just doing its thing, and this thing is pretty miraculous, as far as I'm concerned. It's absolutely unbelievable that it even exists, and you're in here with your issues. So therefore, what you do by default is you have noticed, because you're not stupid, that when the world unfolds in front of you certain ways, it feels better inside, unquestionably. And when it unfolds other ways, it feels worse inside. And when it doesn't unfold either of those ways, it's kind of boring. It's kind of blah. And your states go from depression to elation, depending on what's unfolding outside, and so on. So what your tendency then it's sad, but it's true. Your tendency then is to say, the only way I can be okay inside is to have things a certain way outside. There are certain things that make me feel better. They need to happen, don't they? All right? And they ain't going to happen by themselves. I've noticed that. So I need to be like the two-year-old, start screaming and crying and throwing tantrums. You just do it different ways. I need to make, listen to me. I need to make happen outside in front of me. I don't care about the rest. There's a whole universe out there. I can do whatever you want. But in front of me, that's what affects how I feel inside. I've noticed that. I need to make it so that when it unfolds outside in front of me and it comes in, it makes me feel better. And I need to make it for sure so that when it unfolds outside, it does not do it in a way that freaks me out. It makes me scared, makes me jealous, makes me insecure, makes me self-conscious, makes me embarrassed. I got a whole list. I got a litany list, don't I? I should make you list all of them. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay? But there's a lot of them aren't there. So I now have a job. That's quite a job. Can I spell it out for your job now? Your job is first to figure out what it is that if it unfolds out there will make you feel better and what it is that if it unfolds out there will make you feel worse. Okay, have fun figuring that out. You'll get neurotic trying to figure it out, right? And even if you're one of those people that kind of decide and you're very stubborn about it and there's what I want, I know what I want, now go make it happen. That's the funniest thing I ever heard of. Go out there and manipulate and control the quarks, boson, and leptons as they pop out of the quantum field to manifest in front of you what you want. Yes or no? Come on. You don't have to be a quantum physicist to understand what they've figured out so far. There's this field of energy underneath, not matter, not form, energy, pure energy. No, no weight, no size, no nothing, no color, nothing. Just energy, force, right? And out of that force, out of that wave is manifesting these particles. They kind of pop out. We don't know why. They kind of pop out, and they categorize the type that pop out into quarks, leptons, and bosons, and they put together based on the fundamental forces, and they put themselves together to make, you know, electrons and neutrons and protons, and they make themselves into atoms, and they make them molecules, and, and then there's this thing in front of you. Now, which one of those are you going to be in charge of to make every moment for the rest of your life be the way you want? The answer is fat chance. And you want to know what? You know that. You know you go crazy trying to make it the way you want, don't you? First you go crazy trying to figure out what you want. Then you go crazy trying to make it be the way you want. And my thing is, if that's not complicated enough, okay, let's say you're a great, willful, very focused person. You're going to make a moment be the way you want. Your wedding or just some special date or the car or whatever it is, all right? There are 700 billion more moments that you didn't even work on that are going to come right after that. Right? Put everything you have into the wedding. The napkins will be wrong, or the, they'll have the name wrong, or the letter. And even if it's perfect, it's the most perfect moment of your whole life, it's going to be over. Now what? You didn't control the rest of your life. Of course you can. It was hard enough to focus on just that one event. I just don't understand how you can devote your life to something that is a com never will happen. It is a complete failure, and you'll become a neurotic mess trying to do it. Why do you think everybody's on all these pills? I'm telling you, this is what people have done. They've got a problem inside. They've noticed that certain things outside make it feel better. Other things make it feel worse. And they now devoted themselves to figure out how the world needs to be around them, including when it needs to rain and when it needs to not rain. Well, what's my alternative? To wake up and realize you have a problem inside. It is fixable not compensatable for. You can actually get rid of that problem inside to where you don't feel a problem inside anymore.
what you feel is joy and love and happiness and inspiration about what? Everything. <laughs> you don't need things to be a certain way for you to feel good. You just feel good. That's all. If your body is healthy, you don't have to take certain pills and go to certain things to do. It's, it's just like imagine, imagine somebody who's really sick looking at someone's health. They don't even understand what, what a healthy person's talking about. Well, what doctor did you go to today? None. What doctor did you go to this week? None. This year? None. Well, you must be dying. No, I'm healthy. Right? What do you eat? Whatever I want? No, no. You can't digest that. Oh, yeah, I can. I do great. Well, you, you don't do too much exercise or, or too much mobility or anything. Hey, I walk for miles and run. I play sports. And, oh, no, you're going to die. You, you're misusing your body. This is terrible. No, it's called I'm healthy. If you're healthy, you don't have to do all these things to be okay, do you? You're healthy. It's the same thing inside. You're capable of being healthy inside. To where your natural state is this rush of love, of joy, of well-being. If a task comes in front of you, okay, who's going to do the dishes? It doesn't say, I did it yesterday. I don't do the dishes. I hate doing the dishes. I don't, I don't, I'll do my dishes. I don't do what anybody else says. It doesn't say that. It says, I'll do it. I want to do it. Oh, boy, I get to do the dishes. Well, I love doing the dishes. How would you like that? How would you like that if it did that with every single thing? The alarm clock rings. Oh boy, it's time to get up. Oh boy, I wonder what will happen today. Lest ye be as little children. You are capable of being healthy inside. You're capable of being whole inside. You're capable of having your well-being being completely independent and unconditional upon what's going on outside of you. Difficult situations, good situations, challenging situations, easy situations, fun. Challenging, fun. Like sports. When you play sports, you want to win every time? You want to play a team that you're so much better than that you're going to win 700 to 2? And you, and you let them get the 2. You feel sorry for them. Nobody wants to play that game. Once in a while, it's fun, you know? Once. But otherwise, it's no fun. Go play a team that is very even, or maybe they're better than you. You can learn. It brings out the best of you, doesn't it? That's life. That's the sport of life. It is not a matter of getting everything the way you want because you have problems and you can't handle the rest. It is not about that. Do not settle for that. Do not fall into that. You will never be okay that way. You will just conditionally have Kodak moments and that's why you take pictures of them because you know they ain't going to happen again. That's why you want to capture those moments that feel good. Beautiful sunset. You start, oh, where's my camera? No, get into the sunset. What are you doing with the camera? I know what's happening. You're trying to capture it so that later when you're depressed, oh, I once saw a sunset. It was really beautiful. Let's look at the pictures. No, I want you to find out the beauty that you have inside yourself, how to get there on a daily basis, how to increase and increase the beauty that's going on inside of you, independent of what's happening outside of you. But that doesn't mean you're not dealing with the world. The truth is, as I said, if you asked me, and I've been doing this for a very, very long time, if you ask me, what's the highest path to reach that inner state, I'm going to tell you life. Life. If you need to meditate in order to use life properly, go ahead. But your interaction with every moment of every second of every day of your life is the highest path there is. What do you mean? Well, this is what happens. Have you noticed that if you go out anywhere, including staying inside by yourself, and turn on the TV or read a book or do anything, right, or phone rings, your stuff gets hit. <laughs> your stuff gets hit. You get uncomfortable. Things bother you. Things get scary. Your own thoughts freak you out, right? Which one of you will let me lock you in a room for three days by yourself in the dark? <laughs> I'll probably get arrested if I did that. Okay? I mean, this is a terrible you know, human interaction, right? It's because you've got a problem inside. And if you can't distract yourself from it, I mean, yogis do that. They say, oh, my God, I can't wait to go be alone for five days in the dark cave, right? Okay. Because they go into ecstasy. Because if they're not being distracted by these outer things, right, the energy just goes up. Don't, don't feel sorry for them. All right? It just goes up. I want yours to go up every moment of your life. So how do I do that? First of all, you understand you're capable. 
How do I do that? You use every moment of your life to notice that things bother you, that things hit your stuff. Your thoughts hit your stuff. The rain hits your stuff. <laughs> right? It's like everything causes some little friction, doesn't it? Causes some anxiety, causes some uncomfortableness, and so on. Those are the moments of spiritual growth. You think those are the moments of not spiritual growth. You're wrong. You have to stop defining what you want as things not to hit your stuff and define, come and get it because I don't want it. That's the only thing I ask of you. I don't want that stuff in there. You want that stuff in there? You want to spend the rest of your life insecure and scared and afraid of what you said and what you're wearing and whether somebody likes you or doesn't like you. It's crazy. People don't like you or not like you because of you. They don't like you or not like you because of them. They grew up a certain way. They had certain things. Their girlfriend broke up with them when they were young. They took a blanket away too soon. Go ask a psychologist. You just have to be the latest thing that's standing in front of them. And your hair reminds them of this or your, what you're wearing does this, turns them on or turns them on. It's nothing to do with you. It has to do with this whole psychological mess that's going on inside. So to go out there and try to have people like you, I just don't understand how you waste your life like that. Go on. Try as hard as you can to get them to like you. Tomorrow they won't. You'll, you'll, you'll say something. Oh, you're afraid. You'll be afraid to say something. And then they, you'll think they didn't. You understand that? You can't win playing that game. So instead, you devote your life to getting rid of this stuff. You devote your life not to placating or, or satisfying or compensating for your stuff, but getting rid of your stuff. And there's no better place to do it than the arena of life. Why? Because life hits your stuff. It gets hit all the time, doesn't it? I mean, you have a conversation with somebody and you walk away and your mind won't shut up. Why did I say that? Oh, God, I was doing so good till I said that. Oh, my God, that was stupid. You must think I'm so stupid. There you go. There's your stuff. Front and center. Here I am. He raises his hand, doesn't it? Hello. Hi, do you see me? <laughs> That's what it's like in there. It comes up, all right? And I'm begging you to understand it is not about calling the person up and saying, you know, do you think I said that? Well, because I didn't. Oh, what are you doing? You're defending the part of you that's destroying you. If that part of you makes you act to try to make it feel better, you just bought into its garbage. If a kid is throwing a tantrum at two or three years old in a department store because he wants a toy, which one are you going to buy that kid that toy? Not one of you. I don't care if you're a hippie or the strangest person that ever lived. You know better than that. You can't buy that kid that toy. <laughs> you, you'll see that behavior pattern for the rest of his life. Right? Well, then why do you keep doing yours? Why do you, when your thing throws a tantrum, you do every single thing you can to get it what it wants? Say you're sorry. Say you're sorry. If you don't say you're sorry, you're sleeping on the couch for six years. <laughs> wow. Let's buy into our stuff. All you're doing then is saying what you did, you outside, made me not feel comfortable in here. Anytime anybody, I don't let people come to me, but anytime anybody come to me and say, I'm having all this problem, I'm feeling all this stuff, first question I ever ask is, is that the first time you ever felt that? Your whole life? You've never seen that before? Well, yeah, I've had it my whole <laughs> I bet you have, right? There ain't nothing new in there, okay? So <laughs> something hits it, and if what you're going to do is get on its side, the thing that's keeping you down, that's blocking you, that's ruining your life, your whole life, and you want to defend it and get what it wants? No. Stand up. Be bold. And sit there and say, here is an opportunity for me to deal with this. What do you mean deal with it? Let it go. What do you mean let it go? If you don't want it, let it go. If you don't want to feel insecure when you're around other people that you don't know, they know each other and you don't know them, it's a new group for you, you feel insecure, don't you? You feel self-conscious, you feel a little embarrassed, right? Okay, if you don't want to stay like that, you have the right to use that situation to remain centered and clear and notice, oh, here's insecurity. I haven't seen that my whole life. Let's let some of it go. I can't let it all go. It's not like I'm going to wait, wait, wave a magic wand and all of a sudden feel totally secure in this situation at this moment. No, don't kid yourself. But it's like you're working out. You're trying to lift weights, trying to get stronger. You find out you can lift 100 pounds. 
Very good. What do you want to get to? 150, all right? Don't try it now. Go to 100.1. Add an ounce. <laughs> all right? I'm serious. Add an ounce. I'll bet you can do it. I bet you can pick the ounce. If you add an ounce a day, yeah, you know, no trouble going to 150. It'd take you a while. Go for two ounces if you want. But net result is you know what I'm saying. You do it little by little. And then while you're doing it, you build up your muscles, you build up your capabilities, and pretty soon the 150 will feel exactly like the 100, right? Work on it, work on it, work on it. Don't beat yourself up. Just work on it. You're going to get better every single time. It is the same thing with this. I'm trying to tell you this is the highest spiritual path. So if I find myself in a situation where there's insecurity going on, instead of trying to protect myself, instead of trying to convince people that I'm wonderful so I don't feel insecure, if the motive is, is supporting the insecurity, I don't understand what you're doing. Why would you want to support your insecurity? <laughs> right? I don't want to support my insecurity. I want to let go of a piece of it every single time, just a little bit, just like that one ounce. All right. So how do you do that? You see it, you notice it, and this is what it takes. You listen to this talk. You remember, what I want is out of myself. I don't want everybody else to have to be a certain way or me to make them be a certain way so I can live with myself. I want to change. There. I want to change. I want to evolve. I want to transform myself. So if this is insecurity or this is jealousy or this is self-consciousness or embarrassment, good. That's your starting position. Good. Time to go to work. Time to practice. How do you practice? I've, I don't teach techniques. Why? Because there's 700 billion techniques. It makes you like a smorgasbord. I'll give you some basics, and then you find what works for you. I did this on Sunday, right? So you're feeling insecure. You're sitting in that situation. First, you have to be conscious enough to not get lost in the insecurity, freaking out, drowning, because then you're just going to say whatever. You can be sorry, whatever you say, whatever you do. All right? Excuse me, I have to go home. Uh, oh, somebody, I'll, I'll fake a phone call. All right? <laughs> good, good. That's like, uh, it's time to lift 100.1. No, I don't think so. I go, you're not going to go anywhere. You hear me? If you give in to this stuff, you're either getting rid of it or you're supporting it. There's no in between. So if you get embarrassed or if you feel insecure or if you feel scared, you either work with it to try to let a little bit of it go, not all of it, just the tiniest little bit in this situation or you cement it inside yourself, you carve those patterns stronger and stronger by buying into them and letting them run your life. That's what I'm talking about. This is the, I'm getting very pointed here. That's the essence of spiritual growth. I don't care if you meditate two hours a day. If you don't do this, you're not going anywhere. I've told you that. Go meditate for an hour, feel complete bliss, and I'm in favor of meditation. I'm totally in favor, right? You feel complete bliss, complete joy, then go outside and have... Your neighbor got a nicer car than yours, or somebody's driving too slow in front of you from what you want to do, or it starts raining, you wanted to play tennis, you're all excited, and you're going to get all upset. You just, it takes you a billionth of a second to undo two hours of meditation. <laughs> you just, bam, the patterns come right back. You just offset all the work you just did. You need to do this work. It's called working on yourself willingly. Now, meditation, mostly big thing helps. Because I'm talking to you as though you're able to stay conscious and centered when this thing happens. That's your job. Figure it out. If you're not there, you can't work. If you don't show up for work, you can't do your work. You have to be able to see, I'm in the situation, and I'm feeling insecurity. I'm not insecure. I'm noticing insecurity. I'm the one who's noticing there's insecurity in here. Do you see the difference? If I'm insecure, then nobody can do anything about it. If I'm the witness, the consciousness, the awareness of being, and I see insecurity starting to happen, like a disturbance in the force, I then have the right to do something about it. Meditation, yoga will help you have that center stronger and help it last longer. But the most important thing is the moment you notice it, you start to do work. What do you mean do work? Grade one, positive thinking. I know you're taught positive thinking is the big thing. Positive thinking, kindergarten, okay? But there's nothing wrong with kindergarten. You go in there, positive thinking. I'm feeling insecure. Don't let it come up and take over you. Don't suppress it. If you push it away and ignore it and deny it, right, that just is going to build underneath. You all know that. It builds underneath and gets stronger and starts showing up different ways and you get weird. Suppression creates weirdness and moods and all kinds of garbage. 
Don't suppress, but stay conscious. Then what? If it's sitting there saying, oh my God, I was so stupid. I can't believe I said that. They probably don't even like me. Here's the first time I met. And why are you letting her say that? You hear me? It's like eating food that's going to make you sick and you know it. If it talks like that in there, you need to do something about that. You can't allow that to go on in there. That's your house. Do you understand that? Let's start off this way. Insecurity always feels insecure. That's because it's called insecurity. Wet can't be dry. Hot can't be cold. Insecurity can't know anything other than insecurity. So if you feel insecurity, I'm completely insecure. I wonder whether they like me. I wonder what insecurity will say. Oh, yes, they love you. No, that's not insecurity. That's confidence. So when you're feeling insecurity come up, it is going to talk like insecurity. It's going to say they don't like you. It's going to say they're looking at you. It's going to say they're purposely not looking at you. It'll see all that. Why? Because it's insecure. You can't listen to it. You can't let it take over your life and say the things it's saying. It's not like you have to win the people back. You don't even know. You don't have a slightest idea what the people think. They're probably not even thinking about you at all. They probably didn't even hear what you said. They weren't even interested. Do you understand? It's like you're not interested in what they said. No, really. They said things too, but you're not. No, all you're hearing is, I was so stupid. I can't believe I said that. You didn't hear what they said. You're too busy being neurotic. They're the same way. You don't know what other people are thinking. You only know what your insecurity says they're thinking. All right? You can't let this go on in there. It will keep its patterns going. It will destroy your life. So basically, what do you do? I told you, entry level, positive thinking. What does that mean? I'm here. I've been there before. I've heard this garbage. No. Just start. Master taught this. You're going to be a great enlightened master. He said, every time you have a negative thought, replace it with a positive one. Insecurity. Oh, my God, they didn't like me. They said it was so stupid. The minute you notice, I want you to make it say they love me. Oh, my God. They, they, they just can't even handle how wonderful I am. They think I'm so smart. That was just wonderful, right? What I said was just, it was just totally deep. It was just deeper than what they could think about. Just start saying it. Why? It's not true what it was saying before. So what difference does it make whether you say something nice? It's not true. <laughs> Neither are true. But one's nice. Okay? And you might as well have something nice going on inside. If you're going to have something going on inside. You laugh all you want. It's the truth. That's what you used to say. You're going to used to teach. If you're feeling depressed and not happy, smile. And they'd argue with this. Oh, no, I said, you said I'm feeling depressed and not happy. How can I smile? Make yourself smile. Just make yourself smile. And you'll notice that it changes the energy. Because you didn't go with the down energy. You put out some will to try to raise the energy. And at first you say, it's fake. It's fake. I don't care. The other's fake too. So one thing you can do, and instead of getting into it, I highly encourage you. The best you can do is start just say the opposite. Say nice things. All right? Just do the best you can. Say nice things about yourself. Say nice things about others. It's in just, maybe it's not just insecurity. Maybe judgmental. Some people are very judgmental about other people. Oh, look at her. She's so short. Look at her. Her hair's all messed up. Look at her. She's frizzy. All right? So instead, if you want to change that, you can change that. Just say, wow, are they interesting. They're different than me. I love people that are different than me. That's really neat. I wonder what it would be like to be like them. That'd be exciting. Just start saying that. It's okay. You're allowed to do it. Can we, can we practice for a moment? Right? right now, I want you to make your mind say hello over and over again inside. Start right now. Louder. Louder. Okay. Did it do it? In other words, you have the willful capability of making that voice in your head say what you want. Whatever you make it say, it'll say. The trouble is when you're not using it, it's got something else to say. It just says it by itself. <laughs> you're not making it say, I'm so terrible. Nobody ever liked me. You're not making it say that. It's doing that by itself. So there's the willful use of your mind. And then there's the subconscious or, you know, kind of default use. And I've explained, I'm going to do it tonight. I've explained to you a thousand times why it says what it says when it says it. There's nothing wrong with you. Why does it say all these negative things? Why is it inside? Why does it just say nice things? Because you have stored every negative experience you ever had inside your mind. 
There's not a single thing that ever bothered you that's still not in there. Two years later, somebody says something. This stuff comes up, reminds you of what, what happened when you were little. Or something like that, right or wrong. Anything that ever bothered you, you store inside your mind. And then you wonder why your mind's negative. I'm telling you, it's that simple. I, I use the example of every single time you have a bad smell, take a little test tube. When there's a bad smell, it's like take a test tube, catch it, take it home, and dump it in your house. And then wonder why your house stinks. Your house is going to stink, isn't it? Okay? Every time you have bad food that makes you sick, real sick, ask for a big doggy bag. Take it home, and every day, taste a little bit of it to remind yourself of how sick it makes you. How are you going to be? Sick. All right? Somebody didn't say hello to you. You felt insecure about it. Somebody said hello to you when you were with somebody else, and you don't want them to know you know this person. It's embarrassing because they're not popular. And all these, high school, right? All these things go on, and you store them inside. They're there for days, bothering you. And they're still there. Well, if you store every single thing that ever bothered you, big and small, inside your mind, I wonder what your mind's going to be like. It's got serious problems. And that's why, I'm telling you, that's why. That's why the mind is the way it is. It's not broken. Your mind's fine. But you broke it with this data that you stored in there. So basically, when you're not using your mind willfully, that stuff's going to try to release. That's all that's happening that's not you talking in there. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I don't even know. Should I leave my husband? I don't know. We used to be happy. I don't know what happened, right? I think it was him. I don't think it was me. It couldn't have been me. He used to open the door for me. Now he doesn't open the door for me anymore. It's just, it's just I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just so unhappy. That's not you talking. That's you listening. And why you just sit there and listen to that smack, I have no idea. You hear me? You do notice it saying that, don't you? Who are you? I'm interested in you who notices. I'm not interested in what it's saying. And I've just told you why it talks like that. Because you stored all this garbage inside. And it's trying to release it, just like your body tries to purify. Right? It tries to throw these bacteria and viruses out. It doesn't want that there. Your heart and your mind do not want this garbage there. Therefore, every time they get a chance, which is every time you're not using your mind, it releases and it smells and stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on, you know what's going on in there. You need to change this. And one way of changing it is to willfully use your mind. It's not the highest technique, but it's a perfectly good technique. So that's where positive thinking comes in. It is a powerful tool. It is way, put it this way. Well, you say it's not the highest technique. Why should I do it? Because if you don't do it, you're just going to let go on by, the default go on by itself. And that's the worst technique. Well, the worst technique there is is suppression. As long as I'm teaching techniques, <laughs> right? The, I'm telling you, the worst technique there is for your spiritual growth and for your life is suppression of any sort at any time, right? If it's, if it's in there talking bad and then you push it away and shove it down, you don't want to listen to it, it will rot down there. It will get a thousand times worse. It'll pop up in all kinds of ways. All of a sudden, you won't like your husband or your kids anymore. You hear me? Even though it had nothing to do with them. <laughs> all right? You don't want to suppress. Suppression does not get rid of anything. It stores it down there in the dark where it can multiply and, and, and infest. All right? So that's the worst technique. The second worst technique is what I call the default the fact that all this garbage is manifesting with this voice in your head and the problems in your heart, all those emotions and all that garbage I've been talking about, right? To just let that go on and just be like helpless. I'm in the water drowning. I can't do anything about it. Oh my God, I'm drowning. The water's four inches deep and your face is down and you're splashing the water into your nose. What are you doing? There's nothing wrong. You're spinning on a planet in the middle of nowheres, and this miraculous world is unfolding in front of you, and you're making a complete mess of it because of all the garbage you stored inside. So if you leave it by default, it's just going to get worse and worse. It'll just come up, and then you'll get involved with that, and then you'll leave your husband, and blah, 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 blah. You know all about it. All right? So the worst is you suppress it. The second is you don't do anything about it. So basically, positive thinking is an act of saying, I am willfully aware that this thing is broken, and I am not going to let it take my thunder. I'm not going to let it steal the day. So if I'm doing well and I'm having a good day, and somebody comes to me and says, boy, you put on some weight, didn't you? Are you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a boy. <laughs> wow, that wasn't nice. I know. 
It's purposeful. Thanks. All right. All right. Are you going to let that idiot steal your day? You were feeling good. Why will I let an idiot that would say something like that affect my inner state? Now, obviously, your ego and your stupid little stuff is going to get hit, right? But I don't have to let that be the end result. I can sit there and say, wow, what an opportunity to grow. I love extreme things like that, all right? And I am not going to let this affect my well-being. And so then you start using some positive thinking, whatever you want to do. But you do it. You are using your mind. You are not just letting it create its own garbage thoughts. And little by little, you're going to be shocked. You can retrain that. You know, you can train a dog. You can train a cat. You're the highest species there is. You can train that thing. Your mind is brilliant. Train it to be more positive. How? By practice. How do you learn tennis? Practice. How do you learn piano? Practice. How do you learn to teach your mind to be more positive? Practice. How do you learn to lift more weights? Practice. That's what I mean, working on yourself. So the world is a wonderful place to do that, isn't it? Because it shows you where you need to work. <laughs> you don't have to, I don't have to make a list. You hear me? Don't worry about your list. Don't do anything like that. Just go out there ready to boom, do the best you can each moment, right? Okay, so that's one way of doing it. I taught you another. These are, these are positive thinking. It's a broad area. There are many different ways to work with that. All right, you see what works for you. But please, please do not suppress and do not just leave it alone to keep being like that. Don't let this stuff go on by itself. So positive thinking is one way. Another I taught you, and these are just broad categories, right? Is instead of superseding what your mind is saying by replacing it with another set of thoughts, which is a fine thing to do. Don't, I'm not taking anything away from it. You'll use all these techniques. What you can do is train your mind to say something over and over again. If you do, like a song that gets stuck in your mind, repetition works with the mind. If you say something over and over, the mind keeps saying it. Have you noticed? <laughs> All right? Like you worry about things that get stuck in your mind. I want a mantra to get stuck in your mind. That thing we were chanting, I've been doing it every now, because I want that stuck in my mind. Chant to a great enlightened master, right? And I find, I get up in the morning, it's going on my mind. I'm brushing my teeth, just by itself, it just starts going on in my mind. Oh, I like it compared to what would be going on in my mind. You hear me? Just take the time to practice. And we call it mantra, call it whatever you want. Take the time to practice saying something very simple and neutral over and over with your mind. And you're going to find out that when you start driving your car and you settle back, it's going on. Now, all of a sudden, somebody says something, you're in a spot where you feel insecure and you have a choice. Listen to, oh my God, that was so stupid. Why did I say that? Or grow on, grow on, grow on. Whatever you trained, right? You now, that's the second technique. It's not about replacing what the mind is saying. It's about shifting your consciousness to something other than that. That's a higher technique. Because you can't always sit there and replace everything the mind is doing. But if you move your consciousness off, remember we said you got distracted by the boyfriend or girlfriend, you felt better, right? Get distracted by the mantra. You walk outside, it starts raining. It's raining. It starts saying, I don't want to rain. I want to play tennis, right? Start going on, right? You decide. You want to hang out with the garbage? What good is it to complain about the rain? It's not going to stop the rain. <laughs> so why not hang out with something nice? Why not eat good food? So you sit there and you say it. It's whatever suits you. But for God's sakes, Put your consciousness on something higher than the garbage that is spewing up because of all the negativity you stored inside your mind. So you shift. That's a question of shifting your consciousness to a higher layer of mind. It's still mind. It's obviously mind who's saying the mantra, but that's a higher level of mind than this garbage. Oh, oh, it's so deep. I hope people are understanding. The lower level of your mind is because you stored all this garbage in it and it's trying to release. That's where your dreams come from. Subconscious. Okay, you store all this stuff, it's trying to release, so you, all this garbage is being talked in your mind. You have an intellectual mind, you have an analytical mind, you have a, a higher abstract mind. Use it to do something higher than that stuff. It's a higher mind. We call it Gyana Yoga, right? <laughs> Study the scriptures, do all that. It's like fill the mind with something higher than the garbage that would be going on otherwise, 
right? That's why those techniques work. So you put, you have a decision. Do I put my consciousness where it's being drawn to this negative mind, or do I move it to a higher layer of mind to where a mantra is going on? That's, you know, it's very clean. The mantra is very clean. It's not like thinking. You have to think about this and philosophy and all that stuff. You get caught in all that. It's just very simple. You hear me? Like I told you, back when I used to do mantra, I was learning my techniques back in the 70s. There's all these mantras, Om Namah Shivaya, Hare Krishna, this, that, right? I said, well, they're all names of God. Why don't I just say God? And I literally just over and over, God, 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 God. It's a nice simple one. God, God, until it just went on all the time. And then I had to decide, do I hang out with God or hang out with Mickey? There was, there was no decision. God was much nicer. <laughs> right? so, so, and so basically you have this choice. Where do you want to put your consciousness? Now you'll have to, again, you'll have to meditate and be conscious enough to be there to see the choice that here this is the mind, mantra's going on, and here the mind is going on, Mickey's going on. I don't want to hang out with Mickey. I've done that too long. He's a mess. He's a mess. Right? And I'm telling you, if you shift your consciousness off, that is a technique in and of itself. The rest will fall away. Why? When you get involved, all right, go back to the child throwing a tantrum. If you hit the child, you're going to make a mess. If you buy them the toy they want, you're going to make a mess. So what do you do? You stay patient and calm and centered and clear, and you deal with the situation with compassion and understanding and patience, but discipline, right or wrong. And eventually that child will stop doing that. But if you hit them, they won't. And if you buy them what they want, they won't. Do you understand that? All right, it's the exact same thing with your mind. If you get into this negativity and the garbage it's saying and try to figure out how to fix it, it's, it's multiplied over and over again. You reinforced it. All right? If you sit there and suppress it, it makes a big mess. Okay? If you can move your consciousness off of it gently, not fight with it. The Gita says one should raise the self with self, not trample down the self. That's deep stuff. You hear me? Just basically move your consciousness to something higher. Don't fight with it or anything. And I'm telling you, it's miraculous. The stuff will find a way to release because you're not in the way. You're not in there struggling and reinforcing it or hitting it. Its natural state is purification. You're not letting it happen, right? Because you're freaking out. When you can stay centered and clean and put your consciousness elsewhere, I'm telling you, you wouldn't even know what happened. But just all of a sudden, someone will walk up to you, you know, sometime, take some time, give it some time. Some time later, and they'll say something, right? And you'll laugh. You'll think it's funny. They said, did you gain weight? Are you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very funny, right? And it didn't bother you. Whereas a year ago, it bothered you. You grew. You let go of some of your stuff. You're not taking it personal. It will keep happening. The more you move your consciousness to a higher place, to a higher level, the more the lower has room. It actually is called transmutation of energy. The lower actually seeks the higher. It seeks the highest place it can go, and you gave it a high place to go. Now you don't. Now you express it, and you fight with it, and you suppress it. It can't go anywhere. Else. So that's the second technique. So positive thinking is changing what the mind is saying. There's nothing wrong with that, all right? But this is higher. Is you're moving the consciousness off of it, allows it to release, and the third is the highest. Is the one I always teach you. I don't know whether you can do it. I do it. I learned how to do it, and I teach people how to do it. They write me from all over the world. People who read my books or took the course, and I just say, oh, my God, I've been on the path for 40 years. I read everything. I studied everybody's on. Then I started doing this. It has changed my life. But when the stuff starts, relax. Now, that's different. That's not replacing it with positive. Nothing, again, all these techniques, you'll use them at different times for different things. Nothing wrong with it. But replacing the mind with positive thinking is one thing. Moving the consciousness onto a mantra, onto something other than what it's doing, is another thing. Relaxing away from the talk. The mind is saying, I don't like it, I'm feeling insecure. Just relax. You say, how can I relax? Because you're not that talk. You're the one who's noticing the talk. The one who's noticing that the mind is being weird, the minute you notice, relax. Just relax your shoulders, relax your chest, relax and lean inside away from the noise. You'll start noticing the noise is coming from somewhere. Just lean away from it. That's the highest technique. Why? Now you're not struggling with mind. You're not even dealing with higher mind. 
you're settling back into the seat of self. When you relax, the one who's noticing, I'm telling you, the consciousness that notices that the mind is messed up is the highest thing ever walked the face of the earth. If you ever learn anything from me, you listen to me. Consciousness is it. Consciousness is... <laughs> okay? When the Bible says man was created in the image of God, that's what they're talking about. That's the part of you that is the divine. That's the soul. That's the essence of your being, your consciousness, your awareness of being. Just relax back into where you're watching from. See, that's different than changing what you're watching or shifting your awareness to some other part of the mind. All very good techniques, right? But if you can relax, just relax and release, relax and release, it will fall away. Not only will it fall away because you're not messing with it, but you will have settled back into a part of your being that I wish you could have some idea who you are. You are a very great being, a very great being. That is where the love comes from. That is where the joy comes from. That is where the ecstasy comes from. It is the nature of consciousness. Chichakti, conscious energy. It is the nature of, of consciousness. And spirit, call it whatever you want. Spirit, shakti, consciousness, chichakti, right? Just relax back into where you're watching from. That's what med- Patanjali says about meditation is, right? To contemplate the nature of awareness, <laughs> not what it's aware of, but what is it that's aware what is it in you that knows that you know that you know? I am that I am, right? So this is a form of meditation, but you're doing it every second of your life. And you'll reach a point where you are a letting go machine. I don't care what happens, I don't care how big it is or how small it is, let it go. <laughs> let it go, give it room, let it go, just relax. And you'll start getting very, very high. And eventually, what I started telling you about, I'm telling you, waves, waves, not just little waves, you know, like the highest state you ever felt when it was most beautiful inside, going on all the time, multiplied times a thousand, intoxicating you, feeding you from inside, just wave upon wave, all the time. The time you wake up in the morning, all learning to everything, and you have a choice. You want to hang out with that, or you want to hang out with the garbage. It ain't much of a choice. That's when it becomes beautiful. You know, Christ said that, he taught that. Right? They asked him when he was leaving. It was that last supper. I'm leaving. It's over. And they said, well, I don't understand. You, know, you taught us all this stuff, and we don't really understand it very well. Who's going to teach us? Who's going to teach us? And he said something. It's not the exact words, but something like, I will send unto you the Holy Spirit, the great comforter, and through this all things shall be revealed unto you. There is a flow inside of you. You're going to call it a river of joy. When you come in tune with that flow, there, you, there are nothing you need to learn. It just takes you home. It takes you to the highest parts of your being naturally. That's what we talk about in yoga. We talk about shakti, chi. All right? So you get that by letting go of the lower stuff. The whole idea is to liberate your consciousness from its addiction to this garbage that you stored inside of yourself. All right? so, it's, it's, so there's your choice. You either go down with the garbage you stored in there or you do the work and I gave you a few different techniques to raise yourself and eventually it's going to raise you. You don't have to do anything. Eventually there's no will. There's just no active will. It's just surrender. That energy is flowing up and it's hard to let go. It's like, you know, like letting go of what you thought you were. Christ said you must die to be reborn, right? You just keep letting go into it and get more and more comfortable to let it take you up. And that's where the great beings went. That's why I have such respect for the great, fully, I mean, a lot of people call themselves gurus, right? The fully enlightened masters, the avatars. The energy got so strong that it swept them away into the ocean. It became one. Christ said, my father and I are one. You are all capable of that state. Do you understand that? You're a great being, but you're hanging out with the lowest part of your being. You have to do the work to free. That's called liberation, jivan mukta. Jivan mukta, a liberated soul by letting go, all right? So that's why I say life is not different than spirituality. Don't do that. Life is the highest spiritual path. Yes, you do practices so you stay conscious, but boy, the stuff of every moment of your life, letting go, that's high stuff. Mm, Jagrative.